guys and gals, welcome to the Oxford Holy Club, a place where we ready ourselves to give an answer for the hope that's in us. We will also try to answer your questions, random questions from the interwebs, and have some fun too. So put some seatbelts on your ears because we're in for a wild ride. Well, hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Oxford Holy Club podcast. I jumped the gun on putting that ketchup picture there. My name is Brad Silliker. I'm 130, your host, joined by Lucas Candy. Hello, Lucas. Hello. And Andrew Beckwith. Hey, Andrew. Hello. Oh, boy. Welcome to episode 150 entitled De Niro, uh, Spirit Walking and Cryptozoological Creatures. That one's a mouthful, but we'll uh, we'll get into it and find out what's going oh, on. Catchy. So before we go any further, want to quickly, very quickly remind you that you can f- you can follow us on all the social medias. You can find us on Facebook and on Twitter. You can find us on YouTube. We're on. Uh, we have an Instagram, although it's uh, it's bare bones and pretty dry. On it's lying bumping over there. Okay. Yeah, yeah. At one point we had a TikTok. That was a that was a mistake. What a misstep. Anyway. Um, but if you want to find out where we are and connect with us, uh, you can do that through our website, OxfordHolyClub.com. So, you know what, gentlemen, without any further ado, why don't we just get right into it with a catch up? Cause it's been a while. Welcome Lucas. You're back. Are you healthy? I have, re- I have returned and rel- relatively healthy. All right. Good, good. I know there was some concern. Um, Dwight, I, I saw that you sent me messages on Facebook and I tried to respond and then I lost it somehow and can't find them. It seemed like it was <laughs> genuine concern for the return of Lucas. He is back. Facebook's hard for him, Dwight. He still hasn't figured it out. It's yeah. it's a tough platform, you know? Uh, anyway, so L- Lucas, as our returning host, why don't we start with you and find out what's been going on with you? Talk to us. Well, uh, it's funny because actually the day I, I had to tap out as not feeling well, I just remember thinking like, oh man, I got like a banger for, uh, for catch up time. But, uh, then I, it's been a week and I've forgotten it, but thankfully I have some new stuff, uh, in the hopper. Uh, one is, oh, um, our school participated in jump rope for heart, which, uh, they did it when I was a kid. So well, you guys might be familiar, they give everybody jump ropes and you have to do jump roping You raise money for the heart and stroke foundation. Um, we have an awesome uh, person who basically ran these crazy activities, a different one every day for the week. And when she was trying to set up the goal, she's like, I don't know what to set for a goal. Like I've never done this before. And you can like look up the averages on the website and stuff. And she's like the average in New Brunswick, I believe was $800 raised per school. And we're not a very big school, but she's like, you know what? Stretch goal. Let's say a thousand dollars. So our only problem was, uh, and she said, Hey, like, if we do this since we are setting a bigger goal than most people for the size, especially for the size of our school, like how about like all the administrators get slime. So the principal, vice principal, head of schools and the, the head of schools is like, Oh yeah. You know, like, or, or like, you know, get a pie in the face. And she's like, no mm. slime. It has Ooh. to be slime. Uh, like so Nickelodeon like, okay, slime. Well, I'm so that, hot right that, now. That's, that's where that comes in. Uh, so anyway, we agreed to the slime of unknown quality and uh, they raised a thousand dollars within the first day. Um, and by the end of the week, they'd raised over nine thousand um, dollars. Mm-hmm. Because our kids, I guess, really those kids were talking. <laughs> it was private school, so I mean, <laughs> and they, and it's like, Mister Candy, we're going to slime you. Like there was no joking in it. They were so excited. Oh, that's nice. Uh, so anyway, we were fifth place in Canada, which is pretty exciting. But then came slime time. Of course, I had to pay the piper. Uh, which is fine. I'm I'll, I'll take some slime and, but here's the problem. I was, I was, like you said, I was picturing slime, which is more of an ooze, which is more of like a Nickelodeon, like gack almost, you know, I thought that'd be great. Like a bowl out of my head. Oh yeah, no, yeah. my hair, you know, I was gack. ready for all oh, the jokes. No. It fell on me and then fell off. <laughs> I'm <laughs> kind of what I, what I pictured. But um, apparently she made a whole bunch of it at home and then driving it to school, it all tipped over in the back of her car and then she had to make it from scratch. Oh, <laughs> but the problem was sucks. making it from scratch. She did not make slime. What she made was Kool-Aid with flour in it, I would say, uh, was the consistency. So it was less slime, more something very like liquid, hence will go everywhere. Sugar mud. Also stick. 
also sticky. That's how you get ants. And nice. um, the flour formed a crust after you were done. Oh. So it was like the grossest substance to be gotten with. Um, and, you know, it was fun or whatever. And the, the kids had a great time. They were all like chanting and cheering. And except for one class, I was a little bit worried about them because they seemed like a little bit uh, sociopathic with it. They're like, his shoes, get his shoes. <laughs> they, they make he sure still has some were... pride left in his eyes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and like I, the problem, I couldn't see. I was even wearing goggles. And two seconds in, I was just coded. And anybody, I was very excited. I got to use the Simpsons line, Z goggles do nothing. I don't, I think that was wasted on a bunch of elementary kids, but uh, still. Um, and the problem was after like the, the second dunking, <laughs> Like it's in your eyes and I ran out of like dry places to wipe my eyes with. So the whole time I'm just like, like blind as a bat. And uh, it was, it was quite the ordeal. Next time I'm going to bring a full change of clothes. Cause it turns out, yeah, it turns out I did need a fresh pair of underwear and also a towel. Uh, so to be fair, I need a fresh pair of everything. And after I showered, there was still gunk in my hair. It kind of had a, a booger consistency to it by the end, by the time it dried a little, it was, yeah. Anyway, those kids got their money's worth, I would suspect. So yeah, that's what I've been up to this what, week. Let's uh, that's amazing. Why don't we do, I know that we've all got a few different things. Why don't we take some turns here? So that's <laughs> amazing. Andrew, how about you? Okay. So I had one of those moments this week where I was like, okay, I may be old than I realize uh -oh. and way more out of shape than I realize. <laughs> so we have, uh, we, we had a garden, like a, uh, a vegetable garden last year and we learned a lot from it. And so Tiffany was really on the ball this year, planting like pre planting all of the, all the stuff. So we have all these little cups that sit in our house by the window and they're, they actually like shot right up and we were, and everyone was all excited. The stuff was growing and everything, but we've had this problem with our cat who likes to chew on those plants. Oh, cats. and so we've been like, you know, getting mad at her and yelling at her, you know, all the things that you should work. Right. I mean, and, uh, anyways, I kept saying, yeah yeah, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. I kept saying, I'm going to do something to make, make a protective barrier and then never did. Uh, and so the cat last week was chewing on like the last living plant in, oh. in the whole thing. And I, <laughs> I ran at it and I just want to be clear. I wasn't actually going to physically kick the cat, but I kicked at the cat. <laughs> Gotta hold up and, in court of law. Yeah. And, <laughs> and both my feet went up. And I just went flat oh, no. boom, on my back. The, the like, cat won. And somehow in the middle of all that, I kicked the plant and destroyed the plant. <laughs> and everyone like runs in. They're like, what just happened? And I'm like, oh, my, my foot. <laughs> Anyways, I recovered. I actually genuinely thought I was going to like be sore and take some time but i i recovered i bounced back so i'm not that old but it was a it was a humbling sobering experience for me to say the least did you did uh the, when when you got up did you say anything like this kind of agility or do you land on all fours um mm, no no arrest yeah. no arrested development no, okay. jokes i no. this is the highest praise i can give that sounds like it's from a vinyl cafe story yes uh, that is a, that is a classic dave yeah, thank you, thank game. you, thank you. I should. Uh, <laughs> I was gonna say I should send that in, but rest in peace. <laughs> yeah, uh, true. So for me, yeah, the, um, I I have a question that's come to me in the last couple of weeks, and I I haven't known how to ask it because I'm terrified of what the answer might be. But if there was ever a place to bring it up, apparently unfiltered, it's with you two on the internet. Um, <laughs> so I've been going to the gym for a while, and you start to see trends. Take, you look great, Brad. That Dad, mark isn't great. supposed to be there. What? <laughs> what? What? Huh? What did you say? I said the mark isn't supposed to be there. Oh, I don't know what that means. Anyway, um, so I've noticed trends that have taken place over you know the period of time that I've been there. One person might do something. Other people see that they're doing it, and, and they kind of follow suit. And 
I remember the first time I saw a guy go into the gym with leggings on, just straight up leggings, and then shorts on top of that. And it was just a one-off. And I thought, what on earth? Maybe, maybe he's a runner. I know like maybe, I, maybe this is some kind of aerodynamic thing. And I just kind of left it at that. Didn't think much of it. But when you're on the treadmill, you got nothing to do but either watch Lost, which I do, or scan the area to see what's out there. And I'm watching more and more guys of various ages now. It was a young person at first, and now it's spread the whole gambit. Uh, uh, Is it various body types or just various ages? No, 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 no. Various body types and ages are now wearing um, men. Men. I've yet to see a woman doing this. Men wearing... uh, leggings lululemons lululemons and then gym shorts <laughs> my question is this why I, I don't under i don't understand i don't get it i'd do that but why okay why what what is it doing um, it traps honestly, in the sweat it just seems like like cool it's like when you wear like a t-shirt over your long sleeve but reverse it's, hold on, I got to think through that. It's like, what did you say? It's when like, you wear a t-shirt, t-shirt over your long sleeve. Is that a thing people do? Yeah. I think I've seen that. I think I've seen that. I don't wear tight clothing, so I it wouldn't work for me. Otherwise, I'm wearing two bulky clothes at the same time, and it just looks silly. But, okay, but, but you'd, why, have, you'd have shorts for protection. But why not just wear shorts? Like, is To keep you out of the hot Mexican sun. What? Maybe because they're so skinny, they, they're cold. They've lost all their body fat, and they need the extra warmth provided by leggings. That's all, the thing. All shapes and sizes, that's fellas. All shapes and sizes. <laughs> well, maybe the other ones are trying to look like the skinny minis. Uh, that's what if I'm you're looking for approval to do it, I give you the approval. You I, go ahead. I'm absolutely not. It it's taking, You're going to pull it off. It's taken me 20 years to stop wearing jeans to everything and put on a pair of a gym, like just sweatpants to go to the gym. Do you go to the gym in jorts? I do not wear jeans shorts. No, I don't. But that would be amazing. <laughs> that one I think I'm in for. Okay, I have... Uh, all right. So no answer. You guys can't clear this up for me? I don't know uh, why, I'm, but... I mean, I normally have my finger on the pulse of uh, the fitness world, but uh, this I'm coming up blank on you. I'm sorry. Uh, I'm terrified of what's going to happen I just don't next. Th- I just don't seem like it's that weird like to me. It really does. I'm, I'm not even trying to... I'm not making fun of them. It really seems weird to me to be wearing leggings and then shorts. I I don't get it. Lucas, I don't are, disagree. You, are you okay? Thank you. What, well, I, I mean, real real talk though. Like I I would wear, you know, some people wear like tight stuff for running. Fair enough. Sure. I personally would not be super comfortable wearing like a tight. I I wouldn't call them leggings, but like runner pants but i would be comfortable wearing runner pants with some shorts maybe right i understand what you're not saying it can like maybe maybe it's too cold i mean this well, doesn't apply we'll, to the gym we'll call maybe them it's too modesty cold to run shorts outside modesty shorts. shorts yeah sure yeah okay okay See, i'm always warm and I, especially if i was working out i'd be way too warm all the time so the less material the better hmm. but i understand that not everyone has that same body type so. okay uh, Lucas, Maybe that's why. well, thanks, guys. What else has been happening with you? And we'll we'll push we'll push forward on our catching up. Anything? <laughs> uh, well, I used a lot of time with my my other one, but I did get a chance to uh, last week. I got a random call. I it might have even been two weeks ago. I think I think it was like the day after the last podcast I was on. I got a call and said, "I need to move a hot tub. Can you help me?" Which is one of those ones where you're like, ah, "Is there a way out of this?" Uh, there was not. So, uh, anyway, I just, it's a friend and he, yeah, he's actually a good guy. And I was like, yeah, I, I really <laughs> want to do this, but I was worried. I was like the whole time in my head, all I'm thinking the whole drive there is how many other people are there? What fraction of this hot tub am I expected to lift? Uh, cause this guy g- got a hot tub, uh, somewhere and he, and he brought it. And the problem is his house, he's putting on the front deck and his house is on a hill. That's like this with multiple decks wrapped around. And I was like, and I knew at some point I would be part of the crew carrying a hot tub down an incline that's like 60 degrees. Uh, and I was real worried about how that was going to go because I was afraid at some point my strength was going to be what was keeping us from disaster and I would not come up to snuff. Uh, anyway, we get there and there was five of us, a couple engineers, and we had like, they had like 
systems rigged up and it, it went really well, except for at one point there was a thick beam suspended between a tree over a quite a large gap and the deck. And we had this whole hot tub balanced on this beam. That's only about this wide. And we had two guys on each side trying to slide it along, <laughs> hoping as like, if this goes the wrong way, this whole thing's going in the lake and we might go with it. But thankfully it was fine. It actually went way better than I was worried it might. Um, but uh, yeah, so I moved to hot tub and uh, thankfully I was only 20% of the power, not a quarter or less. Okay. So there you go. So, so what you're saying is you moved to hot tub and nothing comedic funny happened so no, i'm sorry okay well that puts a lot of pressure on my hot tub story andrew thanks <laughs> so i also moved to hot tub and it was only a couple of days ago i got i got a, a call and then a text message because i didn't get to the call um that was like hey uh someone's giving my dad a hot tub could you come and help move it and like yeah absolutely so Sunday night. So, so it, the person that was getting it is our pastor here and someone got it for him and, and nice. to, to bless him. Yeah. Super cool. Super cool. That's a whole other story. Maybe there'll be another time to tell it. Um, but is he going to do baptisms in it? <laughs> Quick question. Is he going to do baptisms? No in staff it? meetings. So, um, <laughs> so anyway, so it was his son that called and he, he, the, the message he got was like, get a crew, uh, the hot tubs come, we're going to surprise them. And so there's like 12 of us that are there to move this hot tub. Cause I'm thinking like you, Lucas, I'm hoping that like how much of this is going to be on me to move. So, <laughs> so a bunch of us are already there and we're all kind of hiding out in our vehicles. So the pastor doesn't see us and the truck with the hot tub comes in. Um, uh, but there's just a box on the back of the truck. And, and I thought, well, that must be like the pump. Uh, for the hot tub. It was an inflatable hot tub. <laughs> nice. Yeah, super cool. No problem moving one of those. No, so we're all kind of staring at each other like, there's an awful <laughs> lot of us for Who's this. Who's going to take it? <laughs> this is an awful lot of... So so two of us, myself and a guy <laughs> named Rob, he and I hook onto this thing and and uh, and take it to the back and set it on the deck. And then just because I wanted to know, I grabbed it because it has handles on both sides and mm -hmm. just picked it up myself. And <laughs> and uh walked around anyway uh but super cool that pastor's got a hot tub now but it was so funny because ryan said after he's like i was i i got a crew and uh anyway the, those inflatable awesome. but but those inflatable hot tubs are awesome How yeah you... they are aren't they <laughs> yeah hey nobody's giving you a hard time about it not not right I now feel like you guys, you. well I guess you were more judging whether or not I had one as opposed to whether or not it was good. Yeah, we, we <laughs> at one point there was some. Yeah, we doubted that it actually happened. Time filming. Uh, let's move on and t toss things over to Lucas and. All right, potent ponderable. So I throw out a question and we ponder it over. Now, mm. if you could flip a switch, and all of a sudden cryptozoological creatures could exist. Would you? Now, let me unpack what cryptozoological basically means. All those weird things that, like, you think aren't true and some oh, people think are. So, you got your, I misread your this. Bigfoot, your, your Loch Nesses, uh, your Loch Nessies, your, uh, your, your Chupacabras, you know, your, your unicorns, right? Anything that's like not real, but like maybe it's real and some people think they're real. You flip a switch, you do not control which ones come. You don't know how many. So, it could be like they're all here or none of them are here. Do you want to make the world more whimsical, but maybe more dangerous uh, or not? Where would you go with this? Do you Wait, wish you lived in a world with these I already have this question. I, it was, it's been in the notes for a while. Um, we didn't do it. We skipped it and did a different one the last time we had Lucas. I misread this. I thought we were to pick which one, if if they existed, which one would we You want? can also pick which one. I'm fine with that too. I went with, <clears throat> uh, but I thought, I thought it was hilarious to say the Dogecoin um because it's crypto zoological ah, <laughs> cryptocurrency hey, joke love uh, it all right all right <laughs> <laughs> i don't know if it's that funny or not it is I, you gotta laugh i'm pretty sure i and i i was gonna get there uh dwight that unicorns are real um and now man in the bible i'm not even in the I'm running a, I'm anymore Dwight's new favorite. i'm not even in the <laughs> running and i'm the one that actually knows them that's the worst uh, of all this hey christina nice to see you here and krista nice to see you here it was hilarious and i know with which you're referencing krista's husband rob it was rob and i that moved the hot tub 
Anyway. Uh, uh, yeah. Sorry, how many people did show up to move this small box? Like 12, tub? 12, like 12. <laughs> <laughs> like, like well, that's good. They Jesus and his disciples moved the hot tub kind of thing. Um, so yeah, I definitely, I, I would, if I could flip the switch, I'm in hundred percent in, I, uh, I would love to, I, uh, I say I'd love to, the Kraken is something that just fascinates me. It's, it's in our mythology. It's all, you know, it's in the video games that we play and it's, it's everywhere. Having said that growing up by the water, it terrifies me. Um, <laughs> you imagine back in the days of the ferry thinking the Kraken might be in the, the Northumberland Strait. Uh, uh, ever since i yeah. forsook big lake camp i've fallen down the power rankings good grief <laughs> uh so i flipped the switch because i want to live in a world with and i have a list of them are you ready um like bessie and nessie and fessy and all the essies these are these are all mm -hmm. different dinosaurs uh that people say are still alive. That's just me. I, I'm in. I'm 100 percent in. Piece of the cake. Flip is switch. The, 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 the switch is flipped. The switch, switch is flipped. The switch is flipped, the switch is flipped <laughs> regardless of the consequences and what it does to sailing. There you go. <laughs> How about you, Andrew? Uh, I'm real torn on this because mm. I feel like the easy answer is just to say no. Why would I want that? Yeah. Uh, life's hard enough but also <laughs> life's hard enough. uh it would be kind of cool like to, i mean some of them uh you know it, it would probably be good for the economy it would add a lot of jobs and mm. you know um for like hunting hunt well there'd be hunters and there'd hunting, be gift shops there'd watchers. be uh what are the what's that what's the what's it called preservation the oh the dogecoin uh, to be no 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 <laughs> I forget. Loch Ness Monster? Anyway, doesn't matter. But there'd be all kinds of jobs created or lost. <laughs> or lost. <laughs> uh, man, I don't know. It'd be like some of the like less threatening ones, like the Loch Ness Monster uh, would be kind of cool if that like actually existed. But some of the more terrifying ones, like a Kraken or... <laughs> Big, uh, Bigfoot's like. See the the Bigfoot ones freak me out. I don't I don't like the idea of the ones that are more. I feel like if they're smarter, I'm more scared of them. Whereas the Nessie mm. seems big and dumb and far away, so I'd be more into that. <laughs> I mean, I mean, it's apparently lived longer than we have and avoided cameras all this time, so it's it's got to have some kind of intelligence. What are you drinking there, well, Andrew? To be fair. Rain. Oh, rain. Probably energy. dreamsicle. I've heard good things. It is. How many calories? 10. That's not bad. Oh, calories well spent. We'll see. So for me, I'm going to say, and I'm torn about this because of the whole mix. And if I, if because I can pick the economy, like, it's amazing. You both went with the economy argument. <laughs> no, I, I feel like I would say no. I hadn't actually thought of the Kraken. That's a biggie. Um, I don't know if this uh, expands so far as to like Godzilla being a possibility, but he's not really mythological. That's definitely a fictional character. Uh, uh, let me just, right? let me just say like Mothman is in here. So Mothman. Yeah. Mothman doesn't freak me out. Um, I think, I think it'd be cool to see Loch Ness monster from a distance from afar. Uh, all the water-based ones are freaky cause you can't see them beneath the waves. Um, mm, and I, but I, I, but I don't like the, I don't like the mountainous apes either. So I don't know what I'm looking for. I'm just going to yeah, say but, no. Uh, there was that movie, that cartoon with the Yeti, and that was a nice movie. Uh, the Missing Link? No, I forget what no. it's called. But uh, actually, but New Brunswick actually has one. There's one up in some one of the Grand Bay lakes, like the one, one of the ones near the States. I forget what it's called. It has a funny name, but apparently it's been seen for hundreds of years. It's some weird thing. Um, but yeah, and I have heard some theories on Loch Ness Monster being a plesiosaur that mm -hmm. kind of got away. Uh, so you never know. You never know. But uh, it would be cool if we found one, but I'm not going to flip that switch because I want to save some lives. I'm not. Uh, it's a crack in the, your the video games. I think a zombie just <laughs> popped up on our screen. Man, Streamlabs. So the program we use, Streamlabs, uh, must have reset the the graphics for alerts. And now there's a zombie that walks on our screen. That's That's their default. Topical. Yeah. Um, Topical. Here's, I just like the name of this one. So I just want it to be real because of the name. The yep. Honey Island Swamp Monster. I mean, come on. Honey Island. 
Or the Jersey Devil. Yeah, the Jersey Devil. Yeah, the Jersey Devil is a big one. Lizard Man of Scape yeah. or Swamp. I like Chupacabra is a weirdie. Yeah. Uh, I actually just found out about one today in Australia, and it's like half horse, half like octopus, all terrorizing. <laughs> so. Yeah, that sounds it, like a one of our super fight was, characters. I'm, I'm actually curious now. Was that because you were researching it for your potent ponderable, or did you come upon no, that? No, it wasn't. You know how in like the Facebook, the Facebook like video feed, you can like scroll through, and normally it's stuff like it'll show me like old friends episodes or old whatever. But this one, it came up with like some one of those random listicle ones, and it's like spooky cryptozoological whatevers. And I was like, oh, okay, I'll watch this a little bit. And most of the ones you heard about, like Jersey Devil and Loch Ness, and the, but then there's that weird australian one with a crazy name and it looks like a kid drew it uh in like some of the sketches yes but i'm looking spooky. at it yeah uh, nightmare fuel right uh yeah absolutely What's it called oh well no the one i'm looking at that looks like is the jersey devil but that's in uh new jersey or that's in new jersey uh where's oh the dungarvan whooper i thought the dungarvan whooper is just a ghost though that's just a flat out ghost yeah dwight but that's in like ghost. boys town or something that's, like that come on dwight uh is the might as well the Australia one, is it a sea one or a land one or a flying one? It's both. I think it's a sea land one. Oh, my word. Yeah. Bun, bun, bunny yip? Yeah, bunny yip. That's it, the bunny yip. Well, that's terrifying, and it's got a human body in its jaws in this rendition. How do you spell it? B-U-N-Y-I-P. Yeah. Let me, uh, let me just... <laughs> what in the world? Yeah. Yeah, that. I've dropped the link they, in the chat. There you go. <laughs> for, for anybody that wants to see old bunny yip. But yeah, in this in the video I watched, bunny they yip? thought it might be descended from this weird dinosaur bird thing. And that, that lived like X number of thousand years ago. And what might have been around when humans were around. So and that's where the stories might have come from. My so you never know. All right. Andrew, good luck with your next segment. All right. Are we all done? Yeah, man, yeah, I'm, I'm tapped out. Uh, did, so I went with we it. Did, did you guys, did you guys, Andrew, you no, said no. And I don't, we didn't said do no. it. We flip-flopped. I see. I want to live in a magical world. All right. That's fine. Me too. Me too. But I just, not the risk. I'm so risk averse. <laughs> all right. <laughs> it's time to smurp. And uh, if you've never been here for a smurp, smurp stands for scripture, message, obedience, repentance, and prayer. We're going to read through a scripture passage and then have some discussion behind each of these uh, sections. And we encourage you to uh, join in, share your thoughts, and uh, hopefully you're challenged. So tonight we're reading from Galatians 5, verses 16 to 26. It says, So I say, walk by the Spirit, and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. For the flesh desires what is contrary to the spirit, and the spirit what is contrary to the flesh. They are in conflict with each other, so that you are not to do whatever you want. But if you are led by the spirit, you are not under the law. The acts of the flesh are obvious, sexual immorality, impurity, debauchery, idolatry, and witchcraft, hatred, discord, jealousy, fits of rage, selfish ambition, dissensions, factions, and envy, drunkenness, orgies, and the like. I warn you, as I did before, that those who live like this will not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law. Those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. Since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. Let us not become conceited, provoking, and envying each other. I owe you both an apology and the listener. Uh, I put the ESV on the screen, but I'm pretty sure in the notes I accidentally copied the NIV. So what you read, I think, is <laughs> NIV. Unbelievable. Anyway, my, I guess my, right. my point is we'll we'll pull from the the notes, not what was on the screen in terms of phrasing. Right. Sounds good. So, Scripture, what words, phrases, or observations in this passage stand out to you? What does the Scripture tell you about the nature and work of God? Anybody? For Anybody? me, uh, verse 17, for the flesh desires what is contrary to the spirit and the spirit what is contrary to the flesh. 
they are in conflict with each other. Uh, the same, the same for me, verse 17, um, this flesh versus spirit was something that jumped out. Obviously, uh, what jumps out are the list, but, uh, uh, let's see. And, and then keeping in step with the spirit. So if we, if we live by the spirit, keep with the spirit. And then this whole thing is of not becoming conceited. Um, that that's what stood out for me, Andrew. Uh, for me, it was actually verse 16. So I say, walk by the spirit and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. Mm. Uh-huh. <clears throat> uh, message. What do you sense the Lord saying to you in this reading? Is there a word of correction, guidance, encouragement, wisdom, or promise? Hmm. Um, go ahead, Brad. Well, I can take a run at this. Um, I've often heard this passage and, and there was a really cool illustration that, that I've heard about it, about the spirit and the flesh <laughs> and, and how they're, they war with one another and kind of what that looks like. And I wish I had one on me and I should have grabbed one because I knew we were looking at the scripture tonight. Um, it's kind of like an elastic, right? <laughs> yeah, it's very much like an elastic. Uh, oh, ha ha. <laughs> I have an elastic. Can anybody see this? Good, good, because nobody knows what an elastic is unless you show them. So so what you're to imagine is this, that if you give the flesh and the spirit equal equal attention, we'll say, uh, and you would shoot this elastic band, keeping both sides taunt, uh, one side the flesh, one side the spirit. If you were to look at this elastic band in the air, what you would see is all the energy of the elastic band is being wasted by it hitting against each other. It's constantly uh, banging against each other and expending all this energy. And so it doesn't go as far. But if you, uh, if you, there's a scientific way to shoot an elastic band, which is to pull one side a little bit tighter. Uh, and so if you pull the spirit tighter and the flesh looser, Oh, I shot it. When it shoots in the air, uh, what actually happens instead of hitting against each other, the, if the, the spirit, it leads the flesh and it actually goes around in this circle pattern and all the energy isn't wasted banging against each other and fighting with itself. It's spent going further now. And so the analogy is that relates to our spiritual life, that if we, if we let the spirit lead the flesh, will go farther and grow deeper in our spiritual life. What that looks like and what that, you know, practically speaking, what that looks like uh, is a little bit different for everyone. I would term it what we would call holiness, growing in holiness. Um, but it it is, so for me, the, the, the message is to intentionally live by the spirit, to model these different fruits of the spirit, love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. What I'm not going to do is have the list of all the negatives up somewhere and go there. I didn't do those things today, so I'm good. Clearly, I live by the spirit because I didn't do all that. (laughs) Instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask the Holy Spirit, okay, help me to live out these things. Um, And and to live in those, you know, the byproduct of living in the spirit is to not live in the flesh. So for me, Mm -hmm. it's to intentionally engage in that with the Holy spirit. Uh, but the Holy spirit is crucial to that because without him, I'm sorry, but I'll just continue to give into the acts of the flesh. And, and the last part of the message for me specifically is as we grow in holiness. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I'm not in the same spiritual place. I was five years ago. Like I have grown in my spiritual walk with the Lord. I'm closer to him today than I was five years ago and closer than I was 10 years ago. Uh, even a year ago, the temptation there that, that, that can come up is to go, look at me, look how great I'm doing. And I'm so glad I'm not like this person, that person, whatever, that it's still dealing with some of these things that are in the flesh. Uh, but scripture is clear not to become conceited. We're not growing in holiness in the fruits of the spirit so that we can then be like, thank goodness. I'm not like them. Mm. And so it's, you know, for me to, to continually let the Lord check my heart and make sure that I'm not being conceited or envying others in, in their journey. There are Christians that are so much further along than me, 
but I'm on my own journey. And that's not an excuse to, to coast, but not to look with, you know, jealousy and envying, uh, others. If that makes it might, you tracking mm -hmm. with me, gentlemen. Mm -hmm. And so that's kind of what the Lord's put on my heart here. I'm so glad I found my elastic band mm -hmm. without it. None of mm. this would have made sense. <laughs> I was real lost for a minute. Yeah. Um, for me, um, talking about, uh, verse 17, the flesh and battling with the spirit. I was kind of thinking about how the flesh is all about the immediate, right? It's like, what does it want right now? And it talks yeah, about yeah, the yeah. whole list of like sexual immorality, impurity, like even things like gluttony, drunkenness, all that stuff. It's like, it's like what it's, it's when you're living for right now, this very second. And that's all what the, the flesh is about. Whereas um, the spirit is all about it eternity right the like long the long haul not just what's best for you over your life but what's better best for you for eternity so trying to keep those things in check and often you know what you know like when you're a little kid you can't you want immediately what you want even if it's better to wait right which is why kids have to be like police don't want to eat or they'll ruin their supper right um mm. then the other one that kind of popped out was verse 26 let us not become conceited provoking and envying each other and that seems to be really talking about like I feel like it's talking about, I could be wrong, but like speaking to Christians specifically, like let's not constantly be like provoking each other. And when I think of that, I just think of like social media and I feel oh. like no matter what post you put up there, wow. like, and I'm talking about just Christians here too, yep. right? Like, like uh, you have a post that's like, everything's okay. Nothing is wrong. And then, then everyone <laughs> jumps on that. Then the other post would be like, uh, Hey, you said this thing, but actually you're super wrong. And here's why. And like, let me, let me show you how legalistic I can be. And then everybody piles onto that. Um, and like, it seems like you have both sides of the spectrum and you have stuff in the middle too. But if like, it's, it's depressing to read the comment section of a like church leaders or like one of the like Christian Facebook, you know, one of the Facebook pages they dedicated to faith. Right. And it could be saying, it could be about something totally innocuous. And then someone will be like really harsh with somebody else. Mm. Uh, and like thinking that they're doing it in like a Jesus way, like, Oh, Jesus would be so happy. I called this person a, a heathen or whatever. Um, and, and just when I see that it, it like, I something, you know, the articles are good and it's nice to kind of keep abreast of what's going on with in the world of, you know, Christian culture or whatever. But at the same time, the comment section is a real bummer. <laughs> But you, but you make so, a, you make a perfect point because Galatians are written to the church in Galatia, right? Like mm -hmm. it was written to the Christians, and he and he said, um, "I warn you, as I've as I did before, like this was this was like, come on, come on, I've told you this already." Mm. Uh, yeah, and and you're you are so right, Lucas, on that whole social media thing. I listened to um, a theologian N.T. Wright today, and the question that was asked was, you know, what if if Paul just showed up today? You know, the Apostle mm -hmm. Paul, if he showed up today, what would he think of the church? Because he was all about unity and the church was meant to be together. But what mm -hmm. has happened is we've divided and separated on so many issues that we never meant to. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and so you make an excellent point that we shouldn't be provoking one another. And that was like a mic drop moment with social media. Nice job. <laughs> I feel like I'm always, it's, I like social media, but I feel like I'm always nagging Aren't on. Aren't you a social thing. media manager? Uh, well, I am for some things. Yeah. Well, but I'm not at school anymore. Well, manage great. it, man. Deal with social manage media. It. Yeah. Gotta manage fix it. it. Fix it. <laughs> fix it. <laughs> All right. I'll just add uh, in terms of verse 16, uh, you know, so I say walk by the spirit and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. And I guess what immediately came to mind is if you kind of take or assess your life and you assess those moments where uh, maybe, you know, you've been gratifying those desires of the flesh. Uh, and then you have those moments uh, where, you know, you're walking by the spirit. I think it's very clear and obvious, you know, why those different things are happening. You know, if if you're living in that life and you're and you're constantly, you know, I'm just going to call it the bad list. If you're living in the bad list, and the you think about your life in that moment, you're probably not walking in the spirit or anywhere close to walking in the spirit. Mm -hmm. um, and it, I think that I I I, I try to, to make it sound simpler than it is, but I just feel like when it comes down to it, you know sometimes we question why, why we do things. Why is my life like this? Why, why, why? And 
you know, sometimes we just need to look at the deeper thing and, you know, where are you in your relationship with God? Mm -hmm. Um, and how much are you (laughs) walking in the spirit in those moments? Uh, and, and really take account of, of your life. Mm. Mm. Um, all right. Wrong mouse, uh, obedience, write down one step of obedience you need to take today or this week based on what God is revealing to you. Hmm. Uh, for me, I think it just be continu- like, as far as like living for the eternal, not for the immediate, keeping, keeping that forefront, like making sure that when I'm making decisions, it's like, well, I'm not going to like, and it could be a spiritual matter or it could be just a regular matter. Like I'm home, I'm tired. I don't feel like, you know, hanging out with the kids. I feel like sitting and just vegging out. Yeah. That's what my immediate flesh wants. Right. But I need mm. to think about like what's best for my family, what's best for me and totally, you know, that sort of thing. And trying to keep those things at the front forefront of kind of why I do and they, that needs to push my decision making. I like how you said, you, you know, you're basically playing the long game, you mm-hmm. know, or you're, or you're doing like a long, a long-term investment, right? <laughs> yeah, that's right. But there is also a sense like Christ came to usher the kingdom in now. And so mm-hmm. those that are in Christ are part of that bringing, bringing the kingdom in the present and now. So mm-hmm. I, I'm not arguing what you're saying. Not at all. Mm-hmm. We are playing like you, you nailed it though. The flesh is the immediate gratification. Uh, it's all about me. It's all about me. And this other list is not that yes, there's joy and peace and all that kind of stuff. And, uh, but these are things that should be, ev- that we can evidence now um, for the immediate as well. Like, man, I would love, I would love for my first thought, to be one of self-control and not one of going, okay, don't, 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 don't do that. But just that, you know, self-control just naturally comes out. Mm. When I look at that cinnamon roll, I'm not tempted. I just don't because my nature has changed. Um, so I guess for me, then the, the point of obedience, oh man, I mean, it's just going to sound like a cop out when I say walk by the spirit, because that's kind of a generalization. Well, okay. What does that look like? Uh, but <laughs> And it's different for everyone. That's what you're supposed to do. <laughs> but that's what I'm supposed to do. And my journey is different than than yours and and Lucas's. And so, you know, the things that I have in place right now that are that are helping me to do that to continue and to continue to make sure that walking in the spirit is my main priority because everything filters out of that. If if anything is taking up my time more than that, then I've got an imbalance. Mm. So cool. Yeah, that's it for me. Um, repentance, write down any confession that God reveals to you in this passage. And, um, and the last one is prayer, spend time thanking the Lord for all his blessings. Usually we encourage you if you're doing some more to do that on your own. And as Brad would always say, make sure you write it down, uh, and keep track of that and journal it. I would say that. Mm-hmm. Would classic Brad. Yeah. Aww. You've been swarped. Okay. <laughs> I like that. Uh, guys, we're going to try a new game. Andrew and I took it for a spin last week. Lucas, you weren't here for it. Uh, so uh, it doesn't have the same impact when there's just two people. Uh, <laughs> so hopefully with three, we're going to play a game called De Niro. And uh, I don't have a stinger for this. And I was trying to think of a good De Niro stinger, but uh, but I couldn't come up with one in time. So we're playing a game called De Niro. This is like... Should be like, you talk, you talking to me? Oh yeah. Why? Well, okay. Talking to me. That's plenty of good. That my De Niro. <laughs> that was my, that was my De Niro. On. Perfect. Yeah. Is he uh, here? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm. Uh, what I'm doing is an Andy Sandberg impression of De Niro from <laughs> Brooklyn Nine Nine because that's my only reference point. <laughs> Um, so this game is like horse. If you were physically active and played something like basketball and you play horse or something like that, I read about that. but yeah, I me too. This is called De Niro. And what we're going to do right now is, is it's going to go in this order. It's going to just, it's going to start with me, then Lucas, then Andrew, and then go around in a circle. And I'm going to pick a movie and then Lucas has to pick an actor that's in that movie. And okay. then once he's got that, then Andrew has to pick a different movie that that actor is in. But here's the thing. You can try to bluff each other uh, a little bit. And and if one of us thinks the other person doesn't know. Uh, so, for instance, if I pick a movie 
And Lucas, you pick an actor, and I don't think that actor is actually in there. I'm going to call your bluff, and if you're wrong, you get the letter D. Uh, and so the point is, if you want, if you spelled De Niro, D E N I R O, uh, once you've got that, then you're out of the game. Right. So pretty straightforward. But if you call me on it and you're wrong, then you get the letter. <laughs> then I get the letter. Have you played this before, I'm Lucas? No, but I think I got the concept. Sounds fun. Andrew, we played this together years ago. Was Lucas not there? Yeah. Oh. Probably in Ottawa or something. Oh, that's right. Probably. You know what? He was. Oh, Andrew and myself and the old Epic Union group. We played this at one of the one of the Baptist camps. I can't remember which one, but here we go. Chick to Hawk. Chick to Hawk. Yep. All right. So I'm going to pick a movie. Then, Lucas, you've got to come up with an actor. I'm going to give you a, a low ball right now. Uh, let's go Iron Man. This is this could be a terrible. So you say Iron Man. I have to say an actor or actress in Iron Man. Correct. Okay. And at some point, so we're going to try I, to pull away from the Marvel because that's just a never ending <laughs> loop. Uh, so for uh, Robert Downey Jr., The RDJ. Judge. The Judge? Judge Reinhold. Mm-hmm. So this is where I call you as a faker, and you, you, you either letter. what you you what you either call me as a faker or try to come up with something that Judge Reinhold is in. Okay, I call you a faker. My name is Judge. Yeah, Judge. you got me. I got nothing. What? <laughs> uh, I suppose. See, I think there's some rule where I can call Andrew out because he needs to know at least another actor or actress in it. Uh, yeah, okay. I agree that that's a thing. So I should have done that, but I didn't. And so I take the letter D. And I would have said Robert All right. Duvall. <sighs> All right. I've got a so D. What is, is the judge actually a movie he's in? Yeah. <laughs> Could you imagine if he bluffed me? Uh, all right. Well, Andrew, uh, or Lucas, you kick it off. Actor or movie. The movie? It doesn't matter. Actor or movie. Uh, Star Trek Generations. <laughs> is that a movie? It is. Yeah. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. You should be able to get at least one from that cast. Come on. I can give you several. Well. Star Trek Generations. Mm -hmm. Is it a made-for-TV movie? No. Nope. It was cinematic, baby. (laughs) Like, this. you're starting to hurt my feelings. You're starting to hurt my feelings. Yeah, it was in theaters. I'm just going to say Patrick Stewart, because I don't know. Yeah. You would be correct. Uh, all right, Patrick Stewart. Let's let's go. I want. I mean, oh, X Men. Hugh Jackman. Okay, here we go. We've got a round. We have a hack. Uh, Les Miserables. Oh come on! <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm calling. I'm calling you on that. Give me. Give me one other person. Russell Crowe. I feel like I fell for that one last time. <laughs> Darn it. I'm losing at my own game. D E. All right, Andrew, kick it off. Um, hmm. Am I, am I responding to this? No, I will. No, okay. it would be oh, you will. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> Master and commanders. Russell Crowe. Nice. nice. Uh, call it. You have to give me a second name. Oh, I hate this rule. <laughs> no, 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 I was going to say, that's a hard rule. No, he can't. That can't be a rule. He can't give you a second because it was my movie. He got the answer right. He shouldn't have to give you a second name from the movie. Oh, only he can challenge you on knowing somebody else. I don't know how the yeah. challenge rule works. Yeah, that then. challenge rule is complicated. <clears throat> um, Russell okay, Crowe. Okay, so it's on, me, it's on me to say somebody in Master Commander that's not no, Russell no, Crowe? No, you say... No, no, you say something Russell Crowe's in. Oh, me. Mm, yeah. Okay. 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 Oh, Russell Crowe. Okay. Gladiator. Oh, another person that's in Gladiator. Uh, Joaquin Phoenix. Ah, that's the only person I knew. Joaquin Phoenix. Uh, Joker. Ah, yes. Who, who's it on now? Me? Yes. <laughs> yes. There's only three of so us. I, 
So do I have to say someone who's in the Joker or you someone do. else? <laughs> someone yes. that's in the Joker. Who the heck's in the Joker? <laughs> hey, can, can I can I challenge him? Because I don't think there's yes. two people in the yeah. Joker. You, challenge. You challenge. I'll just take that in. Okay. <laughs> All right, my turn. Uh, let's <laughs> see here. Man, I need I need to start watching foreign movies. <laughs> Um, I just don't. I don't watch. Le Cousin Dangereux. I don't. I don't. <laughs> I don't watch movies. Oh, Brad, it was such a good Arrest Development deep cut for you. There, I know. Buddy. I avoided it. Okay. Um, uh, okay. Okay. Uh, Jeff Goldblum. <sighs> Jeff Goldblum. Is this my turn? Or Andrew's? Yeah. No, it's Andrew. No, it's your no, turn. It's yours. Oh, You're in, after Brad. Independence Day. Independence Ooh. Day. I didn't see it going there. Really? <sighs> Will Smith. Men in Black. One. Tommy Lee Jones. Okay. Shoot. One. Now, so here's the thing. Andrew can't be like, Men in Black 2. I don't know what's <laughs> going to be. <laughs> That's fair. U.S. Marshals. Oh, that's a nice. sweet movie. Robert Downey Jr. Oh yeah, he is in that. Yes, he is. I mean, maybe he's not, but he is. <laughs> Robert Downey Jr. is in U.S. Marshals. Sure is. Wow. So then I have he's... to have a movie with Robert Downey Jr. in it. You do, yeah. And he's quite young. Okay. In it. Yeah, he would be. Uh, okay, Robert. Downey... Oh, Sherlock Holmes. Oh, it's not on me. Thank goodness. Um, but I think I know one. It's... I feel it's pretty easy. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Jude Law. Oh. Ah, there you go. Crap. I was just trying to think there of someone is. harder to say. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. Jude Law was in uh, Captain Marvel. Oh, yeah, he was. I forgot mm. about that movie. Because it wasn't that good. I didn't mind that movie. It was okay. Man, we're really going around now. No, oh, it's my turn. Okay. Uh, so Captain Marvel. Somebody in somebody, Captain Marvel. Sorry. I even wrote down after Brad on my paper. <laughs> I still didn't do it. I'm good at this game for playing it. Bad at the order of playing it. Okay. Uh, oh, shoot. What's her name? She's not a good actress. She's not very interesting. Wow. Fans seem to hate her. Uh, shoot, 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 shoot. Brie Larson. Uh oh boys. Buckle up for Brie Larson. Oh, I got a good one. 13 going on 30. Oh, really? She was in that? Or was she? You can IMDB challenge at any time. Oh uh, yeah, we should that's what we should call it. We IMDB. Uh, oh my goodness. Um uh, Jennifer. Oh, I can't get her last so name. Close. I know I am. Not Hudson, not Aniston. <laughs> um, Jennifer Gardner. Jennifer Gardner. Electra. <laughs> her last name's not Gardner. No, it's not? What? Yes, close. it is. Gardner? Well, or garter, guard, garden. It, but you know who I mean. <laughs> so, I, I know who you mean, but um, <laughs> J- uh, J- Garner, Jennifer Garner. Yeah, you're saying Electra. Yeah. Um. Oh man, what's his name? <laughs> I went. I went deep into the mm. blockbuster. Oh, I know vault somebody in it, one. and he's very famous. Yeah, he is. <laughs> Why can't I think yeah, of his yeah. name? <laughs> Are you kidding me? <laughs> we got a him and Matt Damon. Yep, are such yep. Good friends. They sure are. <laughs> <laughs> and that friend's name is. And I've got a movie that they were both in. Oh, no. I'm locked and loaded. Might <laughs> tap out. 
I might have to. I cannot believe I can't think of his name. I can think of so many movies he's in. Uh, well, there needs to be like we need to have like a timer on each other or something somehow. Yeah, give me thirty seconds. Time me for thirty seconds. You've already had that. <laughs> more? You're googling. <laughs> no, I'm not. <laughs> uh. I'm so mad. I can't yeah. believe like, he's in Batman. He's in he's in Fargo. He directed Far not Fargo. Uh Argo. Uh mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm. I don't know. I mean you're, you're mother, bending over backwards trying my to My mother in law's cheating. She just texted me the answer. <laughs> <laughs> so now Thank you know your honesty. Ben Affleck. Yeah. We were looking for Ben Affleck. And then yeah. I would have gone. I would have gone Goodwill Hunting, gentlemen. We need to wrap this game up. Uh, I lose because I. I'm, Andrew gets a letter D for that. Lucas, you seemed while not being able to maintain the order of the game, <laughs> somehow still pulled out a win. Um, <laughs> yes. Yeah. So why don't you take? I'd your, like to thank Electra. Why don't you take your victory lap <laughs> and as you go, uh, run us out of the show. All right. So you can follow our podcast on Facebook, Instagram, uh, YouTube. Uh, if you're using social media, use the hashtag OH Club. Uh, you can find us on social media at Oxford Holy Club. Um, and if you use social media, throw up the hashtag OH Club. Not only that, but you can send your questions, your tiebreakers, and suggestions and more to us. Uh, by visiting OxfordHolyClub.com. And folks, we don't pay to advertise, so any support we get comes from you sharing our show with others. So do us a real solid and click the share button. Gentlemen, it's been a pleasure. And so for Lucas Candy and Andrew Beckwith, I'm Brad Sillicker reminding you, until next time, keep spiritually fit and have fun. And have fun. And have fun.